25,000 subscribers. Thank you so much. Hello and welcome back to my RC channel. I'm Andy RC and today I'm checking out the Makerfire Micro FPV Quadcopter from Gearbest.com. This is another tiny whoop style aircraft as you can see and it's very similar I think to the Inductrix FPV. Now it's currently sat at about 63 pounds and I know a lot of people will be thinking wow that's expensive but if you take the Inductrix version of this, so their FPV version, that's 71 pounds so it's actually not too bad and coming from myself where I had a original Inductrix and turn it into a tiny whoop. The original Inductrix was 35 pounds. Then you've got the camera which is 20 pounds and you've got the motors and the upgraded battery and then the little B core if you want to upgrade it to that as well. And then it's coming to about 100 pounds so actually the price of this thing isn't so bad when you compare it to other things. Of course you could probably take a Ishin E010 and save yourself a little bit of money but I like the form factor of this one so of course it has got six millimeter brushed motors now there's no telling if they have any extra power than the Ishin ones so I will have to check that out in the flight. Weight wise it weighs 22 grams without the battery and it weighs 28 grams with the battery so you are given a 200 milliamp 3.7 volt so it's a 1S battery it's using a 1.25 pitch JST connector there and we have this really nice battery holder here so it's made of foam. You could probably lose a little bit of weight if you did away with a bit of this canopy and this here, but I don't think that's going to be too much of a problem. So we have got a camera up front here, and it's one of these all-in-one cameras. It's a tiny camera. I've seen it before, and according to Gearbest website, it's 40 channel. And then we have two buttons on it, so the front one's going to be switching it from PAL to NTSC, and the back one is going to be for changing the channels, so a short press is going to cycle through the channels of the band that it's currently in, and then a longer press is going to cycle through the different bands. So the actual frame of this thing does very much look like the Ishin E010 and it feels quite rugged actually and we have got these tiny whoop style propellers of course you don't get given any spares which I thought was a bit of a shame especially for the price now the flight controller you can't see it but it is based on the SP Racing F3 so that's really good in fact if I take the battery out here you can see that we have got a USB port there so it's a micro B and then we have got a binding button here so this is only available on Gearbest website in DSM2 or DSMX so that might be an important factor for you and it's got a PPM receiver built into it and a little bit of a trick that I found here when you are binding this thing so see we have a little USB connector on the back there I plugged my USB lead in I then held this down and then plugged the other end into the computer and that sends it into bind mode then you can't use the spectrum sat command in beta flight because it's not a spectrum satellite receiver it's actually a PPM receiver so yeah, I always think that's a bit of a pain using those buttons but yeah there you go so the flight controller comes with a beta flight version 3.01 so this is not the latest version, but it's very hard to keep up with the latest version. Uh, the problem with upgrading to the latest version is if you brick the system, we need to know if there is a bootloader solder pad. And that's what I'm doing now, so I'm just going to unscrew this little lid here. Oh, by the way, the camera is sat at a little angle. You can see there, so you can't adjust that. So you are always going to have a little bit of up tilt on there. 
And one thing I didn't mention, of course, is we have a sleeve dipole antenna, which is good for this style of aircraft. However, it is soldered directly still, so it is going to be more durable than a cloverleaf antenna. However, after quite a few bends, I still can see that coming apart. It would have been nice to have one of those little tiny connectors, then it could just sort of ping off in a crash. Anyway, let's take a look at this thing. So this is the flight controller here and I'm looking for a bootloader pad and it does have one so can you see there it says boot so we are good to upgrade the firmware I always look for that before upgrading because it is possible to brick these things and if you're not able to go into the bootloader mode then you are completely stuck so the camera is actually using a little JST connector as well so that's good you can disconnect that so that looks like 1.25 pitch same as the battery actually and then it's taking power there as well from the flight controller and underneath you can see that the motors connect via these little JST connectors as well so if you have a motor go out then you can directly replace them which is fine and we also have got an antenna in here as well which you can't see very well with the antenna runs underneath probably would have been better for it to come out of the top but there you go so you don't actually get a lot of other stuff in this package as I say you get the battery which I've already mentioned and you get a charger to charge the battery it comes in this little box here and that's it we don't have any spares we don't have any props although I guess the idea is that you don't break the props with this sort of thing but I would have liked to have seen more spares especially for the price but there you go so you are going to need some kind of transmitter to get this thing going now I use my Tyrannis with a Orange RX DSM to DSM X module of course you've got other options such as the Devo 7E which I really like as well and you're going to need something to do FPV with so if you want to go cheap I recommend the Fury B VR1s I think those are a good entry level goggle but I am going to be using my Fat Shark HD3s with a Fat Shark diversity receiver a Menace RC invader patch antenna and a Omway antenna as well so let's go into Betaflight next and check out the setup there so here we are in the Betaflight configurator. I've got the quadcopter plugged into the computer via a USB micro lead. Now I haven't updated the firmware of this board and I'm not going to do that in this video. However, I will put a link in the description of a install guide for Betaflight because it can be a struggle to get the upgraded firmware on there. So you can see that it says COM7 at the top there. So I'm going to connect to it and this is the main screen here, I'm going to enable expert mode. So if you want to put the quadcopter on a level surface at this point, so that's level and then calibrate the accelerometer, you can. So that's doing that there, there we go. And then let's go into the port tab here. So as I mentioned, it's a PPM receiver, so there's no need for any of these serial RXs to be selected. So let's go into configuration here. So it's set up as Quad X and there's no board alignment changes. The ESC protocol is brushed, of course, so you need to make sure that that is the case. Otherwise, the motors will spin up when you plug the battery in. Motor stop is turned on out of the box. I have turned it off. That's because I like my motors to spin when I arm the quadcopter. And you can also see here the minimum throttle. That was set really low, something like 1020. So I've just boosted that up to 1040 there. And the maximum throttle I have set to 2000. It's actually 2000 out of the box. So let's come down here so you can see that the VBAT is enabled but we don't have any buzzers or on-screen display or anything like that so it doesn't really matter. And then over here you can see that the receiver is set up for PPM RX input. So yeah, just a DSM to DSM X model list so if you've got a free sky to run it you can put a module in the back of it. But things like FlySky you can't use with this one. 
So just coming down here, everything else I've left the same. We've got telemetry, black box and transponder. I'm not sure why those are turned on, but there you go. Also current meters turned on as well. I guess these are just some sort of stock settings. Let's go over to the failsafe and it's set to drop, so that's fine. PID tuning. These are the stock beta flight PIDs. The only thing I've done is boosted up the Super 8 to 0.8. And actually, this is stock here. Can you see there? So the strength in angle mode is set to 20, which means it's going to be pretty docile in angle mode. So I'm just going to boost that up to 50 because that's just my preference. But you can keep that as stock if you are fairly new to this. So I'll just save that down there. And then let's just check out everything else here. So that is stock settings. And then let's go into the receiver tab. So I've got my Tyrannus turned on. So it looks like you don't have to have the battery plugged in at all, which is good. So I can move my controls and everything is working. The channel map is AETR. Even though I'm using a Tyrannus, but I think that's because it's like a Orange RX module that it's going through. So like a Spectrum module. And then we've got my auxiliaries here as well that is working. So I have set up two switches. So let's go into the modes tab next. So it's only set as angle mode out of the box. And there's nothing set up here. So actually you could just take this, not set any modes up and just fly it. You would arm it with the rudder and then it would be in angle mode. But I've got mine to arm on a two position switch and I have enabled horizon and acro and that's on a three position switch. So angle, horizon and acro. And then lastly I'll just take you into the CLI so you can see the version that I'm running on. So it's 3.01 but I think there's a later version now, 3.11 or something like that. I literally can't keep up I think we had this version for a while so the manufacturers could sort of keep up and it'd be relevant but it just changes so fast. Anyway that is everything in beta flight so let's go and take it for a fly. So here is some DVR footage from the Fat Sharks and there's a couple of lines of interference from the motors but it's not too bad at all. One thing that I found amazing with this copter is the signal strength of the video. Now usually I can't fly all around this house with 5.8 gigahertz, usually cuts out. And with this being a dipole antenna, the fact that it could go all the way around the house, I mean look there's no break up whatsoever, hardly any anyways, it's amazing what they can do with these cameras these days, just 25 milliwatts and this is the tricky bit going back down the stairs. Now this is something I would not usually attempt with a brushed micro but because we have those ducts I don't mind smacking into the walls which are newly decorated and I thought I would have a couple of bounces off the oven there just to show you that it doesn't really affect the flight characteristics. So yeah, pretty impressed with this one. It doesn't have an amazing amount of punch, so you couldn't do acro with it inside in that you couldn't do a roll or a flip without it hitting the ground. I imagine if you flew it outside you could. Just look at this though, threading the needle in the kitchen, just able to fly in the tightest spot because you can because it doesn't matter if you hit anything. I noticed that the camera was slightly off center. Can you see that one of the ducts, it's the left duct, is slightly more in shot than the right, but that's been really picky. One thing that I did do is I took the antenna of the receiver and I fed it through to the outside. I did find that the receiver would cut out. In fact, it does cut out in this video in a bit and you'll see that but that was really my fault. Yeah, don't expect crazy range with this thing, but it is enough to fly indoors and it does that pretty well. So just flying around the house here, gonna go up to the window now. You can see that it flies pretty well indoors, I have to say, it was a lot of fun. And the flight time was about three and a half minutes, so not too bad, about the same as the Ishin E10. 
so not too bad there you can see that it's starting to drop and sag now at this point in the flight and I decide to go up to the mirror and I get too close to that wall and the receiver cuts out sadly and that was my fault so we're back in the kitchen however there's not much fly time left in this guy yet so I don't know if that receiver cutting out was the battery getting low or just the wall that was in the way probably a bit of both but anyway I'm struggling for power now so I will leave it there so I'll put a link in the description if you wish to get one as always thanks so much for watching please continue to subscribe cheers